Well, this is from Leslie Miguel, who uh, freelanced with us for a while, and he is a formidable talent. So it's nice to see you in the chat. Uh, AI, um, I have this uh, this weird relationship with AI, where if I'm talking to someone that's very pro AI, then I immediately have to talk about why AI is destroying society. And then if I if I'm talking with someone who's very like AI has nothing useful, it's nothing but weird six figured hands, then I'm like you're not paying attention because AI is the most important thing that's happened to artists in the last few decades, probably. I mean, I'm sure happy to be challenged on that, but I found that um, the sweet spot for me with AI is often getting AI to help me with code that I personally know how to write. It might even be a function or some math that I knew and I just don't want to figure it out again. I don't want to spend three hours trying to remember how to do this specific task that I've already done before when I can just ask Claude and Claude will give me the answer in 10 seconds and I can move on with my day. I, I had some free time this weekend uh, and so I wanted to sort of deeper dive into AI just to see what I would be capable of using the tools that are out there. And I made a music video in five hours and that really frightened me because I was able to get I got ChatGPT to write a musician's prompt and lyrics. I then plugged that into Suno, which gave me a song. I used that song as a soundtrack for images created with Midjourney that I then used to create clips of video using Kling. And then I edited it together in AE and I showed it to a friend because they, they're not in the tech world. So they're not all that up to speed on what AI is capable of now. And I just wanted them to see like in, you know, in five hours, I made this video that looks like it has actors in it. It's using decent music that has lyrics written by AI. And um, that intrigued me, but it also uh, made me feel uh, sort of icky about the whole thing because it's now so easy to create content that at any point in my life, if I had made any of this that I've used in this music video, it would have been the best thing that I ever made. Just like, look at the lighting in this shot. It's so beautiful. I didn't have to hire any actors. It's all CG. It's like, that's the best thing that I've ever done in Houdini or whatever. And now it's just like this black box experience where in, you know, in four minutes, you can get a video that's better than anything in your portfolio of 30 years. That is upsetting. And I don't know how to feel about it yet because it's, um, it's still such a really difficult subject to have a nuanced conversation about because there's so much wrong with it. But there's no denying that it's a great way to save time for specific tasks. At this point, I'm happy using AI to do creative ideation. It's like the equivalent of using Pinterest to figure out how you want your mood board to look, except now you type in the descriptions instead of just browsing. So I'll use AI for that. I'll use AI for some assistance with coding help. But for the most part, I don't feel comfortable publishing or showcasing any work that I've generated exclusively with AI because it doesn't feel like it's mine. It feels like it's a disservice for me to post even that music video that I made because it doesn't feel like I made it. It feels like I told some computers to make it for me. And so I don't feel like I can claim credit for it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe my attitude towards that will change. But right now, I try to keep AI doing the things that are tedious that I know I can do. I just don't want to take the time to do it.